Let's try to understand cores in this video, which is actually cross origin resource sharing, right? So cores is essentially a security mechanism that is built in the browser that essentially lets browser to block unauthorized access to data and resources. And the way browser does this is usually by sharing or exchanging the necessary HTTP headers between origin and the browser. One thing to keep in mind is that cores is exclusive to browsers so only if the request is being made from the browser to some of different origin only in those scenarios course will come into play okay so one thing that i was at least really confused in the beginning like what do mean what do we mean by origin and how do we actually understand that if i'm trying to make a request from let's say my web application how would i know that if the re if this request is going to be a cross origin request how would i know that right so in order to understand that we can look at the structure of origin like what do we mean by origin so origin is essentially a combination of three things scheme host and port so scheme is like http https ftp things like that then host is essentially your domain name and then port is like if you uh, develop your application locally then you must have heard localhost 3000 8000 things like that but that number is specifically port like in which port the server is actually listening for the request now here's the interesting thing if any one of these changes that would be considered a cross origin request and what i mean by that is if you are making a request from http to https that would be a cross origin request if you are trying to make a request from one domain to a different domain that would be a cross origin request if you're trying to make a request, let's say from localhost 3000 to localhost 3001 or localhost 8000, that would be a cross origin request, right? That means if any of these changes, that would be considered a cross origin request, right? Okay, so now we know what is origin, okay? Now there's this other thing called pre-flight request. So let's also talk about that, pre-flight request. Now usually what happens is that let's say you are let's say you have two application application A and application B and you are trying to make a request from application A to application B which is basically a, a simple request let's say get a request right so in simple requests like get and post browser simply make the request to the origin and then gets the response back from the origin but let's say if the browser is trying to make some complex request some advanced re request which is not simple for example uh, if you are trying to make a delete request to a different origin or if you are trying to make a put request to a different origin now these requests are not considered as simple request so for these requests what browser does first is that it first makes another request which is called a pre-flight request to that origin to check if that actual request which is delete or put is allowed or not right and only if the origin sends back a response that okay put or delete or any kind of advanced request is allowed then only the browser will make the actual request right so with the help of pre-flight request what browser is actually doing it's just checking if those kind of request is allowed by the origin or not okay okay now let's talk about course header like what are some of the most useful headers that you should know when you are working with course the first header is called access control allow origin so with the help of access control allow origin the origin is actually telling the browser which origins are allowed to make the request right now this supports different kind of values for example you could add an asterisk that essentially means any origin is allowed you could be more explicit about this by passing a domain name and you could pass multiple domain names or host so you can do that also then second important header that we need to know is access control allow methods which essentially tells the browser which kind of methods are allowed get post put etc right third important header that we need to know is access control allow headers which is like access control allow methods only but this time with access control allow headers the origin is telling the browser which headers are allowed okay and finally we have another one important uh, header which is called access control allow credentials which which is basically so with the help of access control allow credentials the origin is telling the browser if the browser 
can include credentials like cookies or HTTP authentication in the request. So these, are, so these are essentially the main headers that we need to understand when we are working with cores. Now let's implement all of the things that we have learned so far about cores in a Next.js application and see these things in action. So what I'm going to be doing is I'll, I'll be creating two separate Next.js applications and from one application I'll be making a request to that other application. And since these both applications are running on a different port, for example, application A will be running on localhost 3000 and then application B will be running on localhost 3001, that would be a cross origin request. That means we can implement all of this in the next JS application, right? So let's see that. So right now we have these two application. So if we just open the browser, we can see that in the localhost 3000, we are uh, running this app one, right? And then in the localhost um, 3001, we are running this app two, okay? So if I just open the console for app one, we'll get a few things over here, okay? So let's try to understand this. So this is the, on the left side, we have the code for application one, which is actually making the request to application two, right? And in the right side, we can see the code of application two. So just now let's have a look at the code line by line, okay? So first thing that I did was that I made this a client component because I need to make a request from the client, from the browser only, okay? So that is why uh, I have converted this component to a client component. I imported use effect. And then what I'm doing essentially is that whenever this component mounts, we are making a request to localhost 3001 API user info, right? And then we are essentially waiting for the response, JSON response, and then we are logging that response to the console, right? So this is essentially what we are doing. And if you look at the backend of this, so this is just a simple backend where it is just receiving the get request and then it is just sending back uh, the response data, right? So let me just show you if I just uh, get rid of all of this middleware code, which is this one. I'll simply get rid of that and save it. I'll come here and now if I try to make a request you will see that I'm getting a bunch of errors which is that access to fetch at this from origin localhost 3000 has been blocked by course policy because no access control allow origin header is present on the requested resource. So what this is saying is that you are trying to make a request from localhost 3000 to localhost 3001 and that is a cross origin request. And by default, all of the cross origin requests are blocked, right? Unless and until the origin itself allows all of those requests, right? That means what, what is happening here is that we are actually, by default, application 2 is actually blocking all of the cross origin requests. Now, in order to implement the course functionality in Next.js application, there are essentially two ways to do it. We'll look at both of the ways. Now, the first way is by creating the middleware file. For example, what you can do, you can create a middleware.ts file at the root of your project. And then what it does is that it essentially export a middleware function. And then we also export a config object. This config object has an important property called a matcher. And here we basically pass like for which path we want to execute this logic, this middleware, right? And right now I have, what I've done is I want to execute this middleware for all of the API path right any path that starts with api i want to execute this middleware functionality right so what we're doing here is that what i can do i can get the correct response like this and then i can modify that response by appending this access control arrow origin header and i'm setting this to an asterisk which basically means that any origin should be allowed to get the request from this server right that means any origin can make a request and get the data. This is what I am saying. You could be, you know, you could be more explicit about this. You could simply say, I only want to allow localhost colon 3000. So that means you're essentially saying that only if the request is localhost 3000, in that case, I want to allow that. Otherwise, I do not want to allow that. For example, let's see. Right now we have this localhost 3000. So if I now try to make a request, we can see we are getting the data from the backend, right? Now let's say, let's say that 
I am saying that only if the request is coming from localhost 3002, then only the request is allowed, otherwise it is not allowed. Then in that case, we shouldn't be getting this data. So if I just do that, you can see, we are again getting the course policy, right? Okay, so one thing you uh, might have noticed is that we are actually making two requests. And the reason this is happening is because we are running the application in development mode. And in case of development mode, what Next.js does, it essentially runs the use effect two times so that it can help us in uh, debugging purposes, right? So that is why that is not a problem. Okay, so this is the request that we made. Now let's have a look at the headers, right? So in the headers, we can see that access control allow origin its value is set to localhost colon 3002 right so let's change that to any origin for now and then we can see now when we try to make the request let me refresh that again we are getting that access control allow origin set to any origin and that is why we are able to make the request okay and similar to this headers we can also add other other kind of headers for example all of these things I can add access control allow credentials like whether the request should include the credential information or not then allow origin you know like which origin is allowed to make the request then control allow methods basically lets you set which kind of methods are allowed for example get delete patch post put right you can essentially do that and then you can also do like which kind of headers are allowed right so essentially you can add all of these headers now let's have a look if these headers are appearing here so what I'll be doing is I'll again make a request. I'll come over here and then we can essentially see all of the headers that we have included in the response. Okay, perfect. So this is how you can enable cores in your Nexus application using middleware. Now you can also do this with the help of next configuration file. So what you can do, you can go to next.config.mjs. Now the extension of this file is not important. The important thing is that this is a next configuration file. So any file that is present in the root of your project by the name of next.config, that is what uh, you should be looking for. So you can essentially open that file. Right now what we are doing here is that we are actually exporting this empty object. I can replace this object with this logic. So with this logic, it's just a little bit of different syntax, but the idea is pretty much the same. So what I'm essentially do is saying is that we have this headers function, which is basically returning an array of objects. And each of the object basically represents information about this particular source. So right now what I'm doing is that I'm essentially matching all of the API routes that are available. Right? And then I'm pretty much doing exactly the same thing that I want to allow all origin, I want to enable the credentials, then I want to allow these kind of methods, and then I want to allow these kind of headers, right? So if I just go at the root level and I delete my middleware.ts file, right? One thing you have to do is after changing the next configuration, you may have to restart your server, right? So I've just restarted the server. And then let's try doing this again so I can come here again I can make the request and we can see that we are actually successfully making the request we we can see all of the response headers that are present here and we are actually getting the data right so let's change this to again so let's say only localhost HTTP colon localhost 3003 is allowed to make the request then this request should not work and you can see we are again getting the course policy error right so these are essentially two ways through which you can implement course functionality in your next.js application that's all for this video i'll catch you in the next one